Hi, good afternoon everybody. Uh, this is John Stewart with Autodesk Australia. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join the webinar today to learn more about the new de redesigned copy design. Uh, it shouldn't take more than 30 or 40 minutes to go through the new functionality and uh, we'll be open for question and answers at the end. Uh, just so you know, this is being recorded and will be posted after uh, the next couple of days for you to be able to download and share with your colleagues. Okay, uh, we as before, uh, if you haven't been at one of our webinars, you can post your questions in the question box. Uh, everyone is on mute, so uh, if you have any questions, please uh, post them in the dialog. So I'm going to do uh, two quick polls to get an idea of what you're, how you're doing, uh, how you're managing engineering documents today, and then how do you copy design, uh, copy your designs today. So if you could uh, select from these five options, and uh, it'll give me a good idea of what the users are doing and uh, how you're, how you're actually interfacing with document management. Okay, so 73% voted. Okay. Okay, all right. So let me share the results. So we got a mixed bunch, uh, mostly network drive, but some basic and, and professional, and, and then some homegrown systems. So, uh, that's good because you know this feature that we're going to be talking today is really going to help uh, those who are on network drives see the value of moving to Vault, and then those who are on Vault Basic, they have uh, the older copy design and only the new redesigned copy design is available in, in Vault Professional. So uh, it, it'll definitely uh, help you with your, the way that you do your work. So let's look at the other poll, uh, which is going to be how do you copy, how do you copy your designs today? Okay, we're at fifty-eight percent. Okay, all right. Okay, so results are that, you know, the majority of you are just manually creating uh, copies and, and updating them and, the, and, and really managing it in a more uh, inefficient way. Than, and then also those who are using the old uh, copy design, as you probably know, it, it was very uh, specific and very strict in how it was implemented uh, and really some people you know find it to be too restrictive and, and ultimately would use it for some part of the process and then continue and finish it off uh, manually uh, so today we'll, we'll basically go through and, and show you know the key the key part of the 2016 release was you know driven by 42 percent of the customers uh, posting through our Vault Ideas Station. So if you haven't used Vault Ideas Station, I, I suggest that you take a look at it and, and if you could go in and, and see the, the requests that, uh, and actually you can kudo them and that will help raise the, the visibility with the product team and ultimately you know get it into the future releases. Uh, and if you see John dot Stewart or J dot Stewart, please kudo my my uh, requests that are in there because uh, I've got you know quite a few of them. So uh, it'd be great if you could support getting the the functionality that I'd like in the product up on the top of the list. Okay, so really you know the best way to to learn about copy design after this webinar is to use the in product help. Uh, I can share out this this deck, and ultimately there's a link to it. Uh, and you know everything in product uh, functionality has been posted on the public web that anybody can access. So it, it really gives you a, a detailed breakdown of the functionality and, and and would help you you know 
pick it up or, or and understand uh, how to use it. There is also some blogs out there. Uh, there's one recently that was posted on July 23rd that goes into depth of what the functionality does as well. There is videos and, and explanations. And if you search YouTube on uh, ball copy design or ball copy design R2, uh, you, you will see a number of videos that, that go into detail as well about the functionality uh, that you'll find in this webinar. Uh, you know, what the new copy design was released last year in 2015 R2. It was a standalone application. It has now been incorporated as part of the, the UI, which we'll show in our demo. Uh, and really, you know, the functionality is the same as what was released in R2. So really, what, what does it, it, what is it doing? It, it's really, it's done a completely different approach to what it was like in the previous. Uh, copy design. It really looked at, uh, you know, what are the design problems you're trying to face by doing copy designs, and, and really making sure that it it, it followed those principles, and and as well giving you a, a UI and an interface that is very similar to the way Vault is today, and it's very configurable. It's the same look and feel, and you can get a lot more rich information in it. Uh, they've also uh, taken a lot of the feedback from uh, customers on the capability that they're looking for, and they have been rolled into it as well. And then they, they really looked at, you know, we have a lot of customers that actually are industrial machinery, and they have lots of large assemblies, and how we can optimize the performance around those large assemblies. So they've taken a, a, a great approach of, of moving it onto the server and ultimately giving that performance to back to you as you do copy designs. So from a new user interface point of view, you'll, you'll notice it looks very similar to Vault generally uh, in that you know it's cleaner, you have bigger buttons, you have uh, basically configurable columns. You can actually customize those columns. You can sort like you, the normal way of sorting. Uh, and really, it, it's richer in its, its view. <laughs> If you look at the old copy design, which 40% is you use, use, you know, it, it's, it was very sort of uh, not very intuitive, uh, whereas this is much more intuitive. Uh, and really, it, it breaks it up into, you know, panels to be able to do uh, review to make sure you are uh, really doing what you intend to do with your copy design. So it, it's very important to, to uh, you know, to have that visibility. You know, it, it definitely is a, a, sh a complete shift from the way you would have been doing copy design in Vault. So, you know, there is, you just have to take time and, and play with it and, and really start to see the full functionality and the capability because it is quite a powerful uh, uh, update upgrade that they've done, you know. So, you know, within within the, the, the ribbon bars, you've got these uh, visual icons that ultimately you know, have drop-downs off them to be able to give you more functionality behind them. Uh, one of the key things that they've done today is that, you know, you basically, in the, la in the old copy design, you would pick an assembly and that would be it. You could only copy that and it would copy everything that was on the assembly. Whereas now you can actually copy a complete folder. You can comp copy any file type, but not just uh, inventor files, you can do Word, PDFs, uh, drawings. Uh, so it, it's really robust in that sense that it, it uh, supports a lot more. Uh, and ultimately, there's, you know, you can pick, can you, you want to include all the children, you can set some rules, which is really uh, interesting that I'll show you. And then ultimately, the big arrow is, is execute uh, and, and do the copy. Uh, some of the key things are that, you know, everything is configurable. Uh, you have the same look and feel around configuring the columns, being able to do quick quick searches, quick lists, views, alignments, uh, really, really extend the columns that, you know, you didn't have in the old copy design. You can really bring in more information from any of the properties to be able to give you a cleaner look and feel, give you more information relating to the parts, and really help you 
with the process of, of understanding what you're trying to, to copy, uh, which, which is definitely a plus. They've then broken up you know, the main actions that you can do. So to give you sort of views into those actions before you run the copy command. So you'll see these, these four icons that basically represent, show me where things are going to be copied for, to, show me what the actions are, if they're replacing or copying or, or excluding. So you can actually go through and get snapshots into everything you're doing. Uh, and then, you know, they've included auto numbering and, and the ability to, to, you know, change the f file names on, on copy, which is great. Uh, so you can turn on and off any of these panels and, and basically they're, they follow windows that you can undock them and dock them. So there, there's definitely a lot of uh, flexibility in the view and usage of it. Uh, so the copy design actions that that they're basically the same as before, uh, but not in such a harsh way that it, it's on everything. So you can basically copy a specific file, or you can copy it and all of its children. Uh, you also then have the ability to select where you want to copy the files to. It allows you to pick and, and create new folders to, to copy those into. It allows you to you know exclude uh, children within that copy if there's specific ones that you didn't you didn't want to have copied and you you have plans to either replace them uh, with other types uh, which you can do so exclude really ignores uh, any of the changes uh, that, that would happen uh, you can remove them completely from the copy design uh, you can do a replace and then you can reuse you know if, if for you know, in most cases, you probably aren't doing a full copy design. You're you're copying the top assemblies, reusing, uh, excluding, or replacing uh, replacement parts, so that you can get a different scenario for for ultimately this configuration of the of the product that you're trying to create from from uh, from the existing product line. Uh, there's other additional actions which are will happen automatically uh, depending on the what you've selected if you've chosen you know you want to bring over parents or if you want to uh, view drawings so th there'll be visual cues to tell you if you if actions are happening that ultimately uh, you know will be altering some of the, the files on, on change and, and I'll show you this with the drawing views that we have because uh, automatically you don't want to necessarily copy the drawings. You want to have them be the same uh, file name as the model part. And ultimately, you know, that, that can happen when you're, you're through the additional actions that you have. So let's have a quick demo uh, and run through what the new interface looks like. So, so I have a, I'm going to use a model of a padlock one of our standard sort of models uh, and you see you know within within a vault you can really customize the toolbars and, and you know add properties and uh, really remove properties so you can easily you know set it up to be how you look and feel so if you wanted just to remove the, the thumbnails you just remove columns uh, you can see it I mean you can change the views to be uh, you know small, uh, large icons, uh, it's really how, there's lots of configurations that you can do within the, the, the UI. Uh, so if we look at it from the point of view of picking a top assembly for the for the, the padlock, let's find them. So let's do a search for padlock. Uh, padlock. Top assembly, so You'll notice uh, you can either on the right click you've got copy design or up on the menu bar you've got copy design. Uh, so a quick tip for those who, who use Vault, you know, you can really customize what your, your toolbars look like. Uh, you can create your own, uh, you know, toolbar. Uh, and ultimately it will give you then this empty space. 
uh, up on the top left, and then you can come down through and pick, pick uh, you know, if you're doing specific commands a lot, uh, like rename, you can basically just drag them up onto that. You've got the ability just to show the image. Uh, you can see text only. It depends if, if there's uh, visual cues that are part of the process. Uh, I mean, if you know you do updates, the queue or you update your DWIF files, you can just drag them up here and, and ultimately they become part of your, your, your toolbar so you can get to them much faster. So in this case, I'm going to pick copy design uh, and ultimately you'll see it will bring up a, a new dialog uh, which, you know, is quite large. Uh, but it, it, it's because this operation is probably one of the, the best uh, time savers that you're going to get. It's really important that you can see uh, and, and really understand what you're doing. So, you know, just like uh, I showed, in the, you have the ability to come in here and add thumbnails if you want, uh, and ultimately, you know, drag them over anywhere on the toolbar. Uh, so you can you can basically see them. Let's see. Uh, so you'll see here that basically under the main menu I had picked the the drawing references. So if I turn those off, you'll only see the model that I chose. Uh, and ultimately with the drawing view now you see all of the all of the drawings. And then if you were to you know let's turn that off. Uh, automatically copy your parents. So, so ultimately, if you were to, instead of choosing a top assembly in this case, which is the top one, if you had a chosen a child to, to copy, and you have this automatically copy parents, it would have, you know, brought the the child and the parent in, uh, assuming that you you're doing changes and it's going to impact your parent assembly. So. It brings that in, so you know typically that's going to be always enabled. Um, and then this one here, link drawings and, and models. That was when I said you know the file name for the drawing would be the same uh, file name of the model. Uh, select references. So so basically that's uh, been able to any reference files that would, would pick up those as well. Uh, and refresh. So you know. I'll talk later about action, the action rules. Uh, this this is you know a powerful feature of being able to define you know how uh, how the copied files will will be. Will you you know based on file type? Will you rem clear out all the properties? Will you define a specific category? Uh, so you can build out rule sets to impact the copied files to do a, to, to do a specific action so uh, quite a useful uh, mechanism to, to update and then we'll talk later about the numbering scheme it's it's fully integrated with the numbering scheme uh, so here uh, you basically have the option like I mentioned to, to come in and, and copy uh, just like you can basically navigate anywhere within the vault system. Uh, to find files, you can basically see them as lists or as you know different icons. Uh, so you can really move around to find and add add different files. So you you know you could easily come in and uh, do multi selects as well. So ultimately you're bringing in uh, everything into the window to be processed. So it's, it's just another way of being able to extend and add to, to your copy design uh, what you want to do. So, you know, I started it by choosing an assembly. You can start with a blank slate and then come in and add, add different things to it that you ultimately want to do in the action. You have the option here to, if it has attachments to, to it, to pick those and include library parts. Uh, and then ultimately here, you, you, this is where you get down to deciding what do I want to copy? Do I want to, do I want to copy, you know, uh, you can to expand all levels. You can, uh, and basically come down if you were in the case of having a, quite a large assembly, 
you can really get to see the whole, whole assembly as it, it is as it is. Uh, you could you know just do copy on the top assembly. You could do a, a copy. Uh, let's see, copy all. So basically, it's coming in and copying all. Uh, and and you know if I turn off the copies, let's see. Load. Branch views branch. So let's turn them all off. Uh, if you were to come down to a child and say copy, you know it, it's now copied the child and its parent and then its parent. So it's ultimately gone up through its tree because uh, it, you know, and that it's going to impact those for its changes. And then ultimately, before you run your your final copy, you can set a, a specific rule to, to make sure it's enforced. So these rules you can make it you can have as many as you need that may have different impact based on uh, a certain batch that you do or a, a different product line you you know you may have different ways that you want to actually impact that save uh, and you know I'll, I'll talk later about these different windows to, to give you a better feel for how you would then sort of pre-check what you want to do to make sure that everything is correct uh, prior to, to doing that, that change. Okay, so let me go back to the slide and, and we will basically look at the configurations. So, you know, like I mentioned, it's, it's, it's really easy to select uh, all the related drawings and have those be part of the, the, the copy. I mean, that, that in the copy design before was the older copy design was, was a struggle to make sure that it was seeing all of the, the parent parts and parent documents that it needed to, to copy. So really adding that capability of, of modifying the drawing view gives you much more flexibility about what you do and don't want copied. In some cases, you may not want the drawings copied over and you have that ability to pick and choose if you want those drawings picked. Uh, this is, you know, being able to pick different references and only use those. So, as I mentioned, the, the, the copy design used to be blunt in the sense that everything would be copied. So now you can go in and, and choose that I only want to copy specific uh, instances of that that part. So if you had a, a two brackets that were the same and two different parts of the part of the uh, in this case, it looks like a, a wheel structure. You can basically just ter pick one of them for copy and leave the other one not to copy. So it really tries to align with the real world requirements for for those that you're going to use and not use rather than everything. Uh, and this, you know, our, our hope and our feedback from customers was this this really reduces the amount of cleaning up they would have had to do with the old copy design and really, you know. Uh, go back and, and remove and replace ones that they didn't want to get copied that did get copied over. Uh, this one, as I mentioned, helps you, you know, copy up your parents. So you, you basically are, are, you know, avoiding any accidental edit scenarios. So um, it really, really will make sure that everything is getting picked that needs to be uh, that needs to get copied. And, yep, making sure that the naming convention stays the same. Uh, and, and this is important if, you, if you're doing items and bombs, and ultimately, you know, the drawings and the documents and the models want to be the same. They don't want to be completely different numbers uh, and out of sync. So by having this ability to select them and be use this auto mode, you ultimately then uh, maintain that, that naming and naming and saving con convention. Uh, this one, as I mentioned, is the rules engine about being able to define what your categories 
what your life cycles, what your revision. So really applying some behavior and then based on the behavior, you, you can then enforce some resets of properties. You can set them to be blank or you can uh, set them to specific values, which I'll show you in a demo later. Um, and all of these things really reduce the amount of actions that you need when you're creating a model, which the old copy design really, really did, made you do, whereas now you can uh, do these in that whole action as once. So the, the auto numbering scheme is, you know, as part of the idea station, there was a lot of feedback and a lot of uh, discussion around implementing auto numbering for those who who do implement auto numbering. You know, when it came to the old copy design, it, it, it fell down and it didn't really meet it. it. It actually didn't copy design. You'd have to do the whole copy design, then you'd have to come back and do a rename uh, after the fact. So this is all embedded in and it really supports you having better visibility and better control uh, and, and really allows you to do much bigger selections and setting these numbering schemes in a much easier way than you could before. So it really gives you a lot of flexibility to, to implement auto numbering schemes with, with um, this copy design. Okay, so let's jump in and have a look at it. So in this case, I'm gonna just do a complete copy. Uh, let's do expand all copy, copy two. I'm going to do a copy. Mm -hmm. Copy all. And then once I've done the copy all, I'm actually going to come in here and see do reference. And you'll see here the auto, the red auto, automatically this is going to maintain that naming uh, of, of the drawing and the model. And now I'm going to basically uh, do a copy two, which now I'm going to pick instead of padlock where by default it will put it in the same folder that the original design is. In this case, I want to copy it to my padlock v2. Uh, and you'll see over here now in the, in the panels on the right, uh, it's showing you the folder. So... Uh, if I come back down here, copy two, two. Actually, I have to do select all the. Uh, so in this case, it's kept all the copies in the original padlock. So I have I can come down here and select them all here, and then drag them over. Uh, just grab them all. Yeah, let's grab them. Not sure why it's not doing it from the, the actual dialogue. And copy. It looks like I've done some duplicates actually, so let me just close that and do it again. Uh, make sure that it's copy, copy all. So, no, that's not copy. Code. Okay, so if we look in here, copy two. All 
right, so everything is going to get copied over into Padlock V2. Uh, if you look here, the source, destination, it's showing you what the source name is. Uh, if we go through here and go from copy to reuse to replace to exclude, basically I've done a complete copy of everything. So it's, it's showing all of the files in the copy tab. I mean, if I had went through and said, oh, I don't want to do a full copy of, of, uh, of uh, some of the components, it would only show me then, you know, if I come in here and say I don't want to do a replace on this one or a reuse, if I come into the reuse tab, it shows you all of the associated files that are being reused. If I was to basically want to do a replace, it would, you know, show up there as well. So... Let's go back in and do a copy of that. And then this shows the numbering scheme. Ultimately, what, what the old name is, what the new name is. And, and really, this pane has got a lot of uh, ability to determine and, and select prefixes. You can change those. So if I want to do like V2, uh, it ultimately, you see, it just does that one. Uh, I mean, I can come through and do multi-select. Uh, let's see, select the prefix and do V2. So, you know, in the prior version, this was very tedious that you had to go down through everything and, and pick them, whereas now you've got the ability to do mass, mass picks. Uh, you've also got the ability to, you know, change the numbering scheme. So in this case, if I wanted to completely go to a, a different scheme, you'll notice everything disappeared because it was in the, the none window. Now it's actually moved into the padlock window. Uh, and, and really over here, you'll see that the numbering schemes are, are those that you define. So you can actually turn on and off what numbering schemes that you want to be available to, to uh, to the copy design uh, mechanism. So in this case, if I wanted to change one of the, the pick lists, in this case, I've got, I've got list values for different versions. So I'm gonna go for two. Uh, in this case, if I highlight all of them and then right click set value, I can then pick two. So now that changes all of the auto numbering to my my version two, and then uh, this one's got auto-generated number for six digits. So, so ultimately, I've come in and I've done a complete rename of the existing models to to uh, to the new naming convention. So, if you can cl flick through and see uh, all the different naming, you, you may have, you know, you may have a large assembly where. You ultimately have different sub-assemblies, have different numbering schemes, and this way you can come in and, and uh, pick and choose those parts that are part of one numbering scheme versus another, if that's the case. Uh, ultimately, again, you can, you can go down and see the folders. Uh, and Interesting. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to hit copy, so it starts creating the folder. So what, what it does here is basically does some pre-checking, making sure everything's okay, and then on the server side, this is where it's it's doing the, the complete uh, copy. So you let's see how long it takes. All right, so when it gets all the green ticks, it's, it's done, uh, and then you close your window. So if I come down then and look in V2, you'll see all the numbering schemes have been uh, defined. Uh, so the models and the, 
the models and the drawings have got the same part numbers, uh, so it maintained that reference to be able to, to, to keep them together. As I said, that can be turned on and off. Uh, and, and really, you know, it's maintained and kept the same uh, categories that were defined for uh, the rules that we have in this vault. So if it's a drawing, it's been put in an event or drawing. If it's a model, it's in engineering. If it's a presentation. So it's maintained all the rules and it's applied uh, all of the life cycle and revision schemes that come with that category. Uh, and ultimately, you know, it, it's auto numbered them as well. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation and we will. pretty much wrap up soon because uh, that's that's the core of the functionality. So really, you know, it, it makes it easy for you to configure where you want the copies to happen. Uh, it, it really also, one of the issues in the past copy design was this circular reference effect. Uh, it now supports circular reference, so it, it'll support you know, derived parts or substitute parts that basically are set up this condition where there's circular references. Same with XREFs and drawings. Uh, there is a, a possibility that you have references that ultimately create these circular effects. So, uh, you know, the copy design is now supporting those type of circular references uh, and it makes it much easier to, to copy it. Uh, and this is where we also talked about being able to copy specific parts uh, that are the same for just some of them and then reusing the others so that, that basically, you know, you're not being forced to copy everything. Um, and and this, this feature, which is the replace, uh, not only does it replace an existing part, but it gives you the ability to, to replace a pending file. So one that is part of this copy design. So ultimately, uh, it allows you to go and select from the list of newly created parts that are going to happen in the part design and make that be part of, of uh, the replacement. So that, that's a really a good feature that was one of our customer requests. And then ultimately, Doing all the pre-checks and ultimately the server side is, is speeding up the performance uh, a lot better than the old copy design uh, and really, you know, the, the speed really helps users with, with using this functionality to a great degree. Uh, okay, so Let's do another copy design. I want to do one into V3 just to, to make sure that it, it goes across OK. Uh, so let's pick the padlock again and do a copy design of that. So copy all. See, this is where I don't believe I want to do copy all because I want my my drawings to be auto auto reference. So let me just turn them off again and turn them back on. So they're copies, which I don't want. I want them to be uh, basically. So let's do expand all and then select. Copy, copy two. We'll go to V three. So, so now you see the the drawings are autos, which is what I want, and then all of the children are copied to uh, padlock three, which is version three. So, uh, if we look at the the action tab, let's see padlock rules. Uh, here you'll see if I edit that this is where we can apply some rules about making sure conditions so if I want to do a new rule that's called a, a parts rule parts rule 
and then I can come down here and say all all file extensions uh, that are IPTs uh, is IPT. So this is a bit like our rules base for applying to categories. So if a, a file is checked into Vault and it's got an IPT, put it on a category like engineering. So in this case, if it's a rules based copy, if, if the file has got an IPT, it will then allow us to do some rules. So say I want to make the author uh, has a set value of the user who's running the action uh, and that that will basically do that. If it's, uh, you know, if I want to reset the, the category name, I can do that. So I can build up a list of ac actions uh, that happen based on uh, a specific extension. So in this one, if I move it up, it'll fire before if I have another one for a specific part to do a specific action. I can build up these rules inside of here to ultimately fire on uh, on on copy. So in this case, so I go down here, select that. It should, in, in theory, when I copy this over, change the author to my my name. Uh, and then ultimately set reset the categories to follow the rules that the that that would be if it was a brand new file. So let me do a quick rename again of of, uh, of all of the part numbers. So I'm going to select the padlock. It it you'll notice it moves it out of that window and then it moves it into the padlock. That, that's something they get used to. Uh, but then ultimately, once you're in here, you can then yeah, select select all of the files. So I want to go to a version three. Uh, sorry. So highlight them all. Right click, set value list, and then that's where I would set it to three. And now it's basically going to do a, an auto number and this predefined list of three. So so really, you go through and check. Yep. Yeah, it's all going into Padlock 3. The renaming looks good. It's all copies. If I was doing some replaces or reuses or excludes, because I'm not doing full copies, uh, again, you can remove. If you're, if you're, in essence, creating a, a smaller version or not doesn't have all the parts, you can really come in and selectively pick and choose what you want to be on your, on your, the new design that you're doing. Uh, and then ultimately, you do your copy. Uh, it does its pre-check, and then it's on the server side. It's gonna basically do the copy. It's interesting that when you, when it's not in a go to meeting, it's much faster. I think the graphics is probably also uh, working against us here. So there, it's uh, finished. We close the copy design. If I come over to version three, uh, ultimately it's doing the copy design. If I come in here and look at the it's carried over most of the information, but it's changed the author to be myself or the administrator. So, so I could have built out the rules to ultimately reset all of these so that it's a clean, clean model that when you then start on a new uh, review process, that then the the right people are coming in and, and posting their information as the engineer approver. Uh, uh, on all the key properties that need to get filled out as it goes through it, its its life cycle. Uh, so that's really copy design and its wholeness. Uh, let's see. So let's to wrap up. It, you know, it looks completely different than the old version of, of copy design. It, it's much more configurable. Really, a lot of enhancements around. Uh, being able to pick and select and, and really drive instead of just one model, you can do multiple models, multiple 
uh, layers of the model. You can do copy, reuse, replace, uh, and really uh, the performance has, has been uh, much improved by pushing it back over to the server side. Okay, so really, you know, any data management system that you put in place, as I've said in the last webinars, is all about, you know, making sure that people adopt these and understand them. So it's really, if you're using Vault Professional, you know, I, I really suggest upgrading to 2016 and taking use of these new functionalities and really understand them and then teach your, your team how to use them and ultimately get the best benefit out of them. Uh, you know, Vault is just a tool to try and speed up and help you do the things that you do today. And we really feel that copy design with the redesign that, that's happened, it's, it, you know, the major concerns around copy design and the not fully meeting the needs have been addressed. So uh, really take take full use of it. Uh, and, you know, there's lots of information out there. You can use the Knowledge Vault to go and uh, find more information around our products through, uh, you know, forums, YouTube, uh, blogs. There's lots of information available within the, the ecosystem to help you get to where you need to be. Uh, we also have, you know, other additional tools that would help uh, in the performance that you to make what you're doing much easier. One is is Catic Organize that you know does a lot of information around property. So if you were to copy, do a copy design then information of where that ends up and resides would get information from the folders. Uh, and there's lots of things that help speed up how you do what you do today. Uh, for those who, who are new to Vault or would want to know more, there is CAD Learning. They have a Vault training course for Vault Basic and for Vault Professional. Uh, really explains all of the features around items and bombs and change orders. Uh, so Take a look at that as well. Uh, very, you know, it's a subscription-based model for learning. Uh, so you could take one month subscription, you know, do all the classes, and then you you would be covered. Uh, and ultimately, you know, colleagues can come in and do it as well. So we were having a Autodesk University on the 20 and 21st of August. So if you want to come and meet like-minded Autodesk uh, customers who have lots of success stories around how they're, they're working and using. We're going to have a number of speakers talking about Vault uh, and uh, how, you know, it's really changed the way they do their business. Uh, please, you know, have a look at this website and come along and, and uh, meet the teams. With that, uh, I'll open up to questions and answers. Let's see. Okay, so there was no questions at this point. So Design Assistant is, is basically the tool that comes with Inventor to allow you to, to select uh, mostly its children. Uh, I mean, what we've found is that uh, that's one, one way down, whereas this, you know, you can pick more than just the assembly that you've opened in, in des Design Assistant, uh, and it doesn't necessarily go back up to, to parents, and I don't think it supports the auto numbering. Uh, has the new copy design process been fixed to copy iParts correctly? Uh, I believe so. Uh, I mean, it treats, it treats, I don't think it will copy the, f the factory parts. It will copy the, the, the eye parts, but I'd have to take a look at that one. I think the model that I did have there had two eye parts, a lower plate and an upper plate that was an eye part, and it seemed to copy across okay. Okay, so Sam is saying, Wait. 
So is there a way to limit what you see in the parts relation list? Yeah, I, I mean through the through the expand, you could pick the different levels of, of what was expanded to show you. Uh, and I think you can basically go, I suppose, anywhere down the list and pick. I'd have to, to test it out. Yeah, I mean, it, there's definitely, the old way sort of has a blunt effect of trying to make you copy things that are unintended. You can come through now and, and definitely not pick uh, and that was the reference reference part part of it where you can only if there was two parts in two parts of the assemblies and two different assemblies you can have only one copied and the other not copied so there's definitely uh, limit yeah you can definitely limit the copy to one assembly versus both uh, there's lots of assemblies of shared parts so yeah Definitely, this this old copy design mechanism of brute force everything we we realized just was not user real world usability. So in this copy design, yep, you can basically go to a sub assembly and only you know copy or uh, yeah copy that one versus other parts in the same part on other assemblies. Yep, so. Hopefully that answers your question, Sam. I mean, happy to to set up a, a an, another meeting uh, and dig into the details with you, Sam, if you want, uh, and really proof it out if 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 this is uh, something you want to do. So you can reach out to me at this email address and let me know. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, appreciate your time. Uh, and, and hopefully you've seen value in the, the new functionality in 2016 and and really, uh, you know, try to bring it into your workflow and, and really hopefully gain some productivity and, and efficiency. All right. Thank you for your time.